I'm speaking now with uh, Prabal Sen, Senior Research Analyst of Indian Oil and Gas Sector and Institutional Equities at ICSC Securities. Uh, we'll be joined by Devin Choksi in just a minute, uh, of course, someone who tracks the company very, very uh, closely. Um, uh, Prabal, let me come to you on some of the points uh, that Ambit has raised. And let's talk about new energy because that's something that you look at carefully, where they say that 2020, in 2020, RIL stated new energy will emerge as a growth engine, but there has been a delay of at least a year in two gigafactories. Let me come to how the stock has been performing right now and whether you're seeing any signs of concern. I think, uh, you know, I would hesitate to comment on what some other broker has written to be absolutely clear. I think the author of that report would be better placed to sort of comment on it. Uh, having said that, I think two or three key concerns that have been mentioned, which is something that we concur with, is that the cash flow generation from uh, the businesses is definitely running a little bit behind uh, what initial expectations were at the beginning of 2020s, when the announcements were made both for new energy as well as the expectation that people had from uh, you know, geo as well as retail. So to that extent, the FCF yield, if you see, which is the free cash flow yield from the business, that has actually remained subdued. It was in fact probably negative in FI23. It had a small positive return in FI24. And our expectation is that that number will continue to remain at the sub 2 to 3% level. So that is indeed, uh, 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 you know, something that gives us, uh, makes us a little bit cautious in terms of Reliance's prospects. As far as new energy is concerned, uh, yes, there has been a little bit of delay. Uh, I think, you know, what, what needs to be understood given the complexity of what they're trying to achieve, create an integrated ecosystem across, you know, solar, hydrogen, uh, batteries, fuel cells, and so on. It was always gonna be challenging, even with Reliance's execution skills to basically get everything uh, done in the stated timelines. And that is something that is playing out. I really don't think that uh, that will impact the the you know, the prospects for the stock at this point of time. I think people still have a lot of faith that as and when these businesses pick up, they can actually generate superior returns and can diversify the earnings mix for Reliance. But in the near term, what is really happening is at the same time, while Capex is again ramping up on new energy and there is a little bit of delay. The momentum in retail seems to have slowed a bit. And uh, in the core, in the in the business, in the uh, traditional business of OTC, uh, the kind of volatility that we are seeing in terms of margins is also causing a little bit of concern because if this kind of a weakness actually persists, then that definitely has an impact on the earnings trajectory in the near term. When I say near term, I mean in the next 12 to 18 months. So that sort of is all of it is sort of coming together and 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 probably impacting the stock at this point of time. Devin, uh, good morning. It's Amina. Thanks for joining. And Devin, uh, you've tracked uh, Reliance for more than two decades. Uh, there are reports by Ambit where the concerns go beyond the te temporary or near term adversities. In that sense, they actually believe that there is no long term trigger. Uh, for Reliance Industries. And I read a note or a comment by you yesterday where you said, despite these adversities, Reliance should be bought into. You want to justify why you're looking at this as glass, glass half full as opposed to half empty? Yeah, good morning, Samir. Well, I guess I think uh, you'd have to look at the business of the company in two parts. One, the industrial products, which is driven by the oil to gas exploration businesses and the consumer segment of business, which is driven by the geo platform and the retail particularly. Media included, but I think more important is these two areas, I think important. Uh, now, when you look at, I think, the retail and the geo platform for say consumer facing business, you find that they are cash equitative significantly. Geo is operating on a run rate of 120,000 crore revenue top line and 60,000 crore uh, EBITDA. Same as the situation with retail, wherein I think the numbers are significantly large from the point of view of revenue, as well as from the point of view of EBITDA. Uh, seven and a half to almost 8% kind of EBITDA margin on a total turnover of close to somewhere around 3 lakh crore run rate. 
I think is what I think this particular company is all operating about. So in my viewpoint, I think when in the two businesses, the EBITDA contribution is around 85 to 90,000 crores. I don't think that I think one is basically seeing any kind of degrowth or any kind of I think doubt in this business. On the contrary, both these businesses are growing at a steady rate of, Geo is growing at a steady rate of 20% and the retail is growing at a steady rate of around 15%. With additional brand, I think from their own stable, is also going to be promising from the point of view of larger uh, EBITDA margin and at the same time the, the, the digital platform. Now coming to oil to gas business, industrial businesses, this business is a commodity in nature of course, but I think the way in which this company is revamping this business, they have actually changed the feedstock and as a result of which the profit margins are remaining intact. Otherwise this commodity business has a tendency to bring down the profit margin to some uh, 1%, 2% level, which is not the case here. And at the same time, they remain extremely cash equity out of the total EBITDA of last year. I think almost 60% of the EBITDA comes from this business. So in my viewpoint, I think nothing fundamentally has changed. Maybe the market technicals are building in the minds of uh, the analyst, wherein I think more amount of traders who are basically wanting to short the market, they find the best ground in form of Reliance, HDFC bank kind of stocks, where the weight is higher. So that's what probably I think you are that's, basically that, seeing that's the a fair, That's a fair point. I mean, if you want yeah. to short the market, I mean, that's a heavy weight. But, you know, uh, apart from the technical point of view, let's let's come up to the fundamentals. And one of the points that Prabal was, was making, of course, the group has now diversified away from the energy business. But going ahead, uh, Prabal, do you see any of the factors that you mentioned actually changing or improving? What is the outlook looking like? Are these temporary blips or now more systemic issues? No, I think uh, one of the one of the clear uh, shifts that Reliance has been trying to make, and successfully so, is to reduce the reliance on uh, <laughs> uh, reliance on OTC business in its overall EBITDA mix. If you look at what OTC was as a percentage of overall consolidated EBITDA a few years ago, where it was easily more than 55-60%, it came down to around 48% uh, in the last few years. And as uh, the momentum from geo and retail picks up, we see OTC getting down to somewhere around 28 to 29% of the over overall EBITDA mix. So, uh, you know, I take the point that Mr. Devin just mentioned about even uh, within OTC, you know, improving the fuel mix and getting into more and more specialty chemicals, uh, you know, as reducing the kind of cyclicality that is inherent in a traditional refining business. But even the overall pie itself should actually reduce as a percentage. So that is something that if they can actually execute well, should, uh, you know, augur well from a, from a cyclical and a, and a predictability standpoint. The second aspect, uh, you know, which is basically new energy and the kind of momentum that geo and retail will bring. Geo very clearly, uh, you know, our telecom analyst, uh, I think, is very, very bullish in terms of the uh, profitability growth from uh, geo that can actually be expected over the next few years. I think if I look at our estimates against 560 odd billion uh, of EBITDA that they reported in FI24, the expectation is with the kind of tariff improvement that's happening, they can easily do close to about 920, 930 billion odd. So these two definitely, you know, the only question is, does this kind of earnings growth continue to come at a very high cost, which is to say that does the CAPEX momentum actually keep up with the earnings growth? And I think that has really been the story over the last three to four years where earnings growth has definitely been superior than any other peer in its market cap category. But that has continued to come at a high cost. Therefore, ROEs and ROCEs have remained at sub 10% level. Right. So, uh, Prabal, right. Sorry. Prabal, in that case, I mean, the stock has largely done what the index has done. For the last one year, it's done 21%, despite the fact that it's got, it's a it's a high growth engine, like you said. Uh, looking ahead, uh, are you recommending that the current weakness should be used as an opportunity to add to positions of RIL? Or would you say better off to avoid right now? There are better opportunities in the market if one is looking to generate or create alpha for their portfolios. See, over the last one year, we've had uh, somewhere between a hold and a reduced rating on the story, uh, precisely for the reasons that I just mentioned, that while earnings growth continues to be segment leading, there are definitely triggers that should ensure that their EBITDA growth and their net earnings growth will continue to be in the strong, uh, you know, uh, mid-double-digit territory. And there are definitely prospects of uh, complete 
transformation in terms of the business mix that is offset by the fact that you know the capex reduction or the slowdown or moderation in capex run rate is definitely happening at a slower pace than uh, what we would imagine and that is something that has been true for the last three years and as you rightly mentioned the new energy delta uh, while it would take some time to come is already captured in most street estimates most people including us are giving one and a half times capital employed to the initial plans of 70s to 75,000 crore that was announced. And despite that, we struggle to get beyond a fair value of somewhere around 29 to 29.50 a share. That has been our stance and frankly that remains unchanged at this point of time. Okay. Uh, you know, our focus on RIL uh, this morning, uh, Devin Bhai, just one question from you and, and let's talk about retail. So some of the concerns in that report as well is about the growth in retail. Uh, Geo is on one hand of it, the capex issue comes up, but on retail, are you comforted with the pace that we are seeing? Actually, I think uh, <clears throat> I, I would be extremely comfortable for a simple reason. They are an end-to-end -end solution provider. On one side, you have your own brands. On the other side, I think you've got your own distribution reach, which is, I think, all connected along with your payments. So I think the entire uh, post terminal that they have, which they is basically, I think, helping them in managing the complete supply chain logistic, is giving them a power to basically cater to the demand in respective stores, respective regions, including Geomart. At the same time, their omni-channel product model, which is basically giving them on-ground stores at the same time digital deliveries, both synchronized at one level, which is an unbeating proposition at this point of time. So in my viewpoint, I think retail is a steady grower. Most importantly, given the global experience of retail, most of the retailers would end up earning margins over on 2 and 3%. Here, this company is talking about earning margin of 7.5 to 8%. So certainly, I think there is a much more power left at this point of time, as I see. And some of the large retail franchises that they have, including electronics, I would think that they are uh, basically generating significantly large amount of growth. Given the choice, once I think once we would have geo finance connected with the retailing, I would think that I think the business would probably expand along with the market share. So one would remain bullish about the prospects and the possibilities. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Prabal and uh, Devain, for speaking with us today. RIL in focus.